Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court. My name is Justin Hedges, and I, along with my co-counsel, Mr. Adlai Groves, represent the petitioners in this case, the city of Shawnee, Leslie Note, Ed Wilson, and Randolph Day. Today, I will contend that the 14th Circuit erroneously concluded that Shawnee Garner Ordinance 902, from here on simply the city curfew, was unconstitutional because it violated respondents' First Amendment rights. My co-counsel will explain why respondents' due process rights were not violated on the night that the curfew was enforced. At this time, I would like to request that two minutes be set aside for rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honors, this case is simplified by remembering that local governments have a duty because their citizens place upon them an expectation to ensure the safety of their community. Because of this obligation, we ought to grant them latitude and deference in determining how to appropriately act to ensure such safety. Though indifferent to their message, when the respondent and Occupy Garner staged a, national, a, a protest that garnered national attention, the city of Shawnee was faced with an unprecedented dilemma as, in regards to how to ensure that safety. In response to the coming crowd, they enacted the city curfew in order to codify a previously informal policy of not allowing anyone in non-designated camping areas in the city's central park. On the night the, the arrests were made, Officer Ed Wilson was placed in charge of over a dozen detainees. He was also distracted by the mayhem filling the park and other unruly protesters. When it became evident that Mr. Gribble needed medical attention, he was immediately given such attention. But wasn't that two hours later? Uh, yes, Your Honor, and my co-counsel will argue that that was an appropriate amount of time and what will ultimately only matter is whether or not the officer was deliberately indifferent with regards to the injury. Counsel, how should we evaluate whether one is talking about a public park, whether one is talking about day or night, and the timing on when your ordinance was passed? Um, what is the, what has been the standard on how we look at those scenarios? Uh, for example, let's deal with the public park as opposed to maybe a public street. Well, what your are the Honor cases said? Uh, with regards to public areas, um, this court has held that there is some deference to the local government when the need is public safety, which is my third point that I can jump to now if, if you so wish, um, that in the case of Heffron versus International Society for Krishna Consciousness, this court upheld that regulating where people could be in public arenas was constitutional when it served the interest of public safety. Well, before we get to that point, counsel, and back to perhaps point one, don't we have to determine whether or not this ordinance was content neutral? Yes, Your Honor. And that is my. Can you speak to what's in this record to justify the city's concern about safety, which you articulate is the basis for a content neutral ordinance? Yes, Your Honor. In Clark versus the Community for Creative Nonviolence, this court specifically stated that when it comes to activities like camping in the case of Clark and in the case before you today, those activities are seen not as speech activity but expressive conduct and therefore can be constitutionally regulated. Additionally, the regulation, the city curfew is content neutral as stated in Ward versus Rock Against Racism when the regulation does not specifically address the content of the message that but doesn't the, Ward also tell us that the primary inquiry is the government's purpose in determining whether or not the ordinance is content neutral? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And if that's the standard that we apply, don't the facts in this case suggest that the primary purpose of the city's ordinance was to head off this uh, MLK weekend uh, rally? Yes, Your Honor. That is entirely true. If that's true. How can we determine that this is a content neutral ordinance? Because that is what the city has argued that that is one of the interests that they put forth and therefore uh, it, it's something that's been exhibited by the city's previously informal policy of only allowing camping in a designated area at night, the 20 RV lots that are set aside on Central Park. 
Well, weren't there we, campers, uh, protesters also in the RV park setting up tents during this weekend? Yes, Your Honor. Were they arrested? They were not because they were abiding by the city's curfew, which allowed some people space to set up their tents and camp. The fact that it was only 20 spots gave the city a much more limited area where they knew they could adequately control uh, anything that might go on and ensure that public safety. The 14th Circuit, in their opinion, makes no reference in regards to the Ward case as to whether or not this ordinance specifically addresses the content of the message well, the versus how it's communicated. The circuit disposed of the content neutral issue in one sentence, basically, did they not? Uh, Your Honor, they did, and I... I and, and they did not uh, treat at all, they did not cope with uh, the issue of whether this enacted as an emergency ordinance uh, <clears throat> failed in its content neutrality because it was enacted in reaction to a specific expression which was politically unpopular. Your Honor, I believe that the 14th Circuit erroneously concluded that. If you look in the case of Hill versus Colorado, Justice well, Stevens- before you, before you leave that, I want to be sure I'm clear that under Ward, you agree or disagree that purpose is, the facts about purpose for the ordinance is controlling or not. Uh, Your, Your Honor, I don't, I don't believe that it's controlling for the purpose of determining content neutrality. I believe that we look at... Isn't that at, what Ward says, though? Ward, Ward goes on to uh, see if there's anything in the regulation that specifically prohibits content or speaks against the content or aims to control the content that someone wishes, wishes to espouse. In that case, bands playing concerts in their, in their city park. Back poor to your people question. showing up for a weekend rally to protest the plight of the poor people versus the wealthiest people in the country. I'm sorry, Your Honor, could you clarify that question? Back to the facts in this case. Doesn't the record establish that the city's motivation was to ban this rally that was directed at pointing out the disparity in wealth between 99% and 1% of Americans, and that's the purpose behind the ordinance. Your Honor, the stipulated facts do not indicate that. That was the reasoning of the 14th Circuit, but that's never proven in the facts. What Are there facts other in the record other than the facts that support that conclusion? The, the facts that, that support my conclusion, Your Honor, is that the city of Shawnee had always had the policy of not allowing even one or two homeless people to sleep in the park because they wanted to keep that space free to ensure the safety of that park and the surrounding community. The 14th Circuit inferred because of the last minute uh, emergency session that it was done in response to the coming curfew. Our contention is that that might have, that the curfew or that the protest may have been the impetus for the timing of the passage but it wasn't the aim of the regulation as evidenced by the way city officials had always acted in regard to the park and people being in there past dark. I guess what that we're counsel. saying and asking, is there any other facts besides that to support that argument? No, Your Honor. The council assuming that that was at least in part the motivation or, or perhaps even the whole motivation, would that be determinative of, of the constitutionality of, of this ordinance? Not when you're looking at a facial challenge, Your Honor. Uh, additionally, even if the curfew is seen as having infringed on respondents' First Amendment rights, the limitations effectually placed on his ability to convey his message reflect reasonable restrictions in regards to time, place, and manner. The court specifically stated in Clark that though something like pitching symbolic tents was expressive conduct, and specific to their meaning, it did not make it exempt from statutory regulation. Furthermore, these regulations, when content neutral, are allowed to set outer limits within which free speech can occur, just as was the case in Ward, where the decibel limitations that were imposed by the city and enacted by the in-house sound technician that they were allowed to hire were an outer limit to how far a band could reach with their message because it controlled the volume. We urge you to view the city curfew 
with this same kind of outer limitation argument that within that argument, respondent and any other group are free to espouse any sort of content or message that they wish, just so, so not. So during the day time then, for instance, protesters could go out and pitch tents just as a symbol of the Occupy movement and that ordinance would not prohibit that? This ordinance did not prohibit that, Your Honor. Counsel, you referred to Clark a couple of times. Well, uh, where were they camping at in Clark? In Clark, it was uh, the two areas at issue were Lafayette Park and the mall, both national parks, Your Honor. Should there be a different standard as opposed to a national park uh, based on the case law and a municipal park? Your Honor, if anything, I would contend that the deference ought to be greater to the local government when dealing with something like a city park, which they have direct jurisdiction over. Both Heffron uh, and Hill versus Colorado dealt with local governments enacting local regulations, as did Ward. Well, but did not in Clark, the regulation was no camping at all in the national park? The regulation in Clark, Your Honor, had to deal with erecting a place to sleep. And it, it banned any sort of unrolling a sleeping bag or pitching a tent or anything, which was key to Community for Creative Nonviolence's message about raising awareness for homeless, the homelessness population in our country. Well, but if you've got an absolute um, restriction in Clark well, of no camping on the National Mall, and in your particular case, I've heard you say that, well, we made a distinction. Aren't you, in fact, selecting out particular individuals because you pointed out, well, it, certain people were allowed to do something and others weren't? Uh, your Honor, our argument is that that proves that this was not an unreasonable restriction. We still allow them to do certain things during the day. It's just narrowly tailored to what the city felt was an interest of providing safety by not allowing countless people to inhabit their park at night. And at when night, but, you allow them to engage in recreational camping, yes, but I honor. assume not protest camping. Who uh, makes that determination? There's nothing in the ordinance that makes that determination. It freely allows for anybody to be in the lots on the designated camping area. Anybody, even if they're there for non-recreational camping purposes? Yes, Your Honor. In fact, the record, page 6, uh, paragraph 14, states that some of the Occupy protesters indeed hooked up their RVs to the lots that were in Central Park. In, in the ordinance applies point. only to this one park? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, in, in looking at Clark, wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't a ban on camping alone uh, be, be less intrusive, serve the same, same ends, but be less intrusive? Your Honor, I, I don't think it would be, simply for the fact that it would allow crowds to still be in the park and do uh, any variety of things under the, under the cover of night, which still creates the hesitancy and worry about safety that was legitimate on City of Shawnee's part. Council, take a little time, please, to, to deal with the third element, and that's whether or not this statute's facially overbroad. Your, Your Honor, I argue that this statute is not facially overbroad because it, there is no other alternative to which you can ensure the safety that's any less restrictive than the curfew. Respondent never argues, and nothing is shown in the record where there's an argument, that there's some viable alternative. The only thing that's ever been offered in case law are things like city permits, but this court has struck city permits down because they allow city government officials to wholly allow or deny certain groups, which allows them to be more discriminatory. There is absolutely zero discriminatory effect. Your Honor, I see I'm out of time. Would you like me to conclude? Thank you. Your Honors, while Occupy Garner may have been the impetus for the timing, it was not the focus or aim of the regulation. This is a city park which exists rampantly in our society without a hint of constitutional challenge. Because it is content neutral and narrowly tailored to a governmental purpose, we ask that you re reverse the 14th Circuit opinion. Thank you.